Remember I said uh, Bernalillo County was coming on the show? The whole county. Yeah, she's right here, <laughs> Bernalillo County. No. <laughs> Good morning. Hi, yeah, Kitty. sometimes you got to represent the whole That's thing, right. right? That's right. That's right. Kitty Richards is here, uh, part of the promotion team for... Help. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, well, good to meet you. Thank you for coming. Nice to meet you also. Hi, Kitty. Hi. So we're here to celebrate National Public Health Week, and then it's also the, the week of the child. That's that right. Wonderful. I never, I didn't even know we had a week of the child, but it's really great. So what kind of activities and what, what do we do here in Bernalillo County to celebrate these two events? Well, we um, are preparing for a public health walk on Saturday. Um, at noon and then we are also we have a conversation wall where we're asking folks to really comment on where they learned how to read the importance of reading to their life um, there's a connection between being able to read and write and a good quality of life what we're finding in working with some of the communities is that a lot of people have not graduated they don't read um, and so we're really trying to encourage folks to uh, get graduation, uh, high school graduation, or GEDs, it really has a huge influence on how long one lives and what your, your earnings are over your lifetime and how long, uh, you know, how well you live. So that's the point that's of it. So there is a direct obvious correlation between literacy and health for the obvious reasons that you can read labels and you can kind of, but what, in addition to that, what is that connection? What other comments are you getting and receiving? What other information are you getting about those, those two things, how they, how they mesh? Well, I think what we find when people are writing on the conversation wall is it really brings them back to how they learned how to read and the importance of that. Um, and in terms of having a, a workforce that's able to you know, be productive in our community um, and to be able to fill jobs. I think it just really hampers your ability to be able to do that. Uh, when you look at folks who, um, the incarceration rates, um, I have a few statistics here, that um, a one in 10 young males who did not complete high school were incarcerated compared to one in 33 who did complete high school. So it really has a range of, of influence on your life. Um, and what we're finding is that in working with neighborhoods, many people can't read and can't write. We actually originally started looking at, okay, let's get these folks uh, high school GED equivalents. Well, when we went in, uh, English was a barrier. A lot of folks don't speak English, and so making sure they have the services for English as a second language, um, <clears throat> making sure they have services for uh, getting their GEDs, and uh, it really is, you know, where you live has an influence. What do you have access to in terms of services in your neighborhood? Um, it has a huge influence on how successful you are. Oh, for sure. So mm -hmm. Bernalillo County does have literacy programs. It does have, because I remember being in college and volunteering as a college student with AmeriCorps, mm -hmm. and we'd actually go to community centers to teach literacy. Um, I can't believe we're still dealing with that issue today, 20 years later, mm -hmm. but do you happen to know the, <coughs> the illiteracy rate here in New Mexico? Um, the, right now we have four, well just not illiteracy, but in terms of high school graduation, there are four high schools that have under 60% graduation mm -hmm. rates. Um, English as a second language in some of the neighborhoods is very high, up to 30%, who speak uh, Spanish at home and therefore don't have a good grasp of the English language. Um, and so I think it's just really important. We're partnering with a lot of nonprofits, ABQ GED, Reading Works, which is a voluntary organization, Encuentro, Peanut Butter and Jelly, just to really be able to bring the resources to the people that need them. Yeah, I think part of it, Kitty, is that people who read just assume everybody does. Mm -hmm, that's right. And in, in, in the news reports that I've seen over the years, people that finally overcome their, the block, the, mm -hmm. the realization that they can't read, it, there's a terrible stigma attached to it, that there's some shame, mm -hmm. that, that, that they feel inadequate <coughs> in some way, and they've got to break through that. Some of these problems you're talking about are language related, but some of them are just, hey, I never learned properly, and then they don't know how to get help. Um, and they're afraid to even come out and ask for help yeah, exactly, or admit that they need exactly. help. So there's a lot of psychological things in mm -hmm. play here with this, this problem. 
There absolutely is, and it's not to put shame on anybody. No. It's really meant to, in fact, we're going door to door, knocking on doors in, uh, in the International District, asking if people need help. And that's really when we found out, wow, this is really a serious problem, mm -hmm. the issue that folks can't read. Mm -hmm. And so it's not to bring shame or not to say there's pro a problem with the educational system. It's really to be there to provide resources to the folks who need to it. To bring empowerment. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. So you've got the Community Health Walk this Saturday That's coming right. up. Let's give everybody some details on that. It's 1230 to 130, and it starts at the San Pedro Library. Yes, and at that, um, so we will be doing a public health walk, and uh, we will have the conversation wall at the San Pedro Library. Um, and we'll have music and events happening there. So we're really excited to, to draw people out um, into the community and to really comment about how they learned how to read mm -hmm. and how it's helped them, as well as how we can all work together in partnership to, to help those who can't do that. Kitty, I, I'm, I'm sure you've seen some success stories yourself, the people that you've been able to help through this program. We have um, Reading Works is a wonderful organization, um, and so this partnership, we've been able to really strengthen the ABQ GED um, to really look at the barriers and try ways of, of removing some of those. They're going to a computerized system for GED, and so we really are hoping not to do that, to, to have other service providers where it can be paper, because I think that's another barrier to getting your GED if you're not computer literate. Well, really, great job. that's a huge, huge task. Yes. Yeah. Now we got we have music vendors, conversation wall. Um, so we're going to start at San Pedro Library, and it ends at John Carillo Park at Emerson Elementary School. And we're looking for some really good weather this weekend. I so hope I so. I wish you the very <laughs> best. Yeah. And um, are there any other locations or conversation walls around Albuquerque? Yes, the conversation wall will be at Tallinn today uh, in the International District, and that's from 11 to 12, and as you mentioned, at Emerson School um, on Saturday. Great. Best uh, of luck to you. Thank Kitty. you very thank much. Thank you so much for representing all of Vernalillo County. I think you do a <laughs> fantastic job. Thank you. All right, we'll be back in a moment. More to come on The Morning Brew.